funding is kind of like uh, shifting from being provided by the banks towards being uh, provided by the non-banks and also most importantly the instruments that are the vehicle of like supplying those funds uh, are synthetic or derivative instruments that are some of the most shadowy type of instruments that are out there. I'm Elham Saidi Najad, and I'm currently Term Assistant Professor of Economics at Econ Department at Barnard College, Columbia University. Uh, so yeah, the HD model stands for this model or um, that I developed in one of my papers, a hierarchical dealer-centric model of FXO evaluation. And basically in this model, I am pricing a very important piece of financial instrument, which is called foreign exchange or FX swap based on the elements of market microstructure, such as the business model of the dealers and the structure and organization of the dollar funding market. These elements are usually being uh, kind of like abstracted from the, uh, and missed from the uh, standard and more classical model of asset pricing. Basically, the classical model of asset pricing is uh, are based on this notion that the market is efficient and regardless of what the, how the market is structured and what the business model of the market makers are, the prices reflect all the available information about that particular instrument only. And that's why as long as your model can capture all those available information, then uh, the prices are the correct prices. But uh, basically in this model, I am explicitly saying that it is how the market is structured and organized and uh, how the uh, market makers are conducting their business that determine the price of financial assets, in this case, uh, FX swap. There are a few major shifts that have happened in the foreign exchange market that are mostly shadow banking type of uh, changes. The first one is that the funding that is happening in the global dollar funding market is uh, mostly happening through the balance sheet of non-banks rather than the banking system. And this is happening in every layer of this uh, hierarchical global dollar funding market. So uh, when it comes to like uh, the uh, U.S. domestic market, the uh, main uh, U.S. institutions that are providing dollar funding to their foreign counterparties, they are basically used to be large U.S. banks, but now they are more uh, non-bank institutions such as U.S. money market mutual funds. In the non-U.S. segment of International monetary system the same like it used to be foreign uh, foreign or non U.S. banks who are providing dollar funding to the rest of the uh, foreign investors and to the rest of the world, but now basically like non bank institutions are conducting such operation. So again, like one of the shifts is. Uh, this kind of like um, the change in the nature of who are the global dollar funders. They used to be banks, now they are mostly non-banks. The other important shift is the type of instruments that are actually being used in order to provide global dollar funding. Uh, traditionally, when we think about like access to dollar funding, uh, we are talking about more tangible and regulatable uh, kind of like uh, assets such as a bank loan, a euro dollar bank loan. So a type of financial instrument that is being made by the business model of the banking system and sometimes it's being kept in the balance sheet of the bank, sometimes it's being securitized. I don't want to go there, but the point is that the main instrument used to be be again a bank centric instrument such as a, a loan. But uh, when we think of the new instruments that are replacing euro dollar loans, we see that it is basically like a synthetic, the so called synthetic instruments. What are synthetic instruments? Basically, derivatives. These are the instruments that the cash flow stream are just replicating the cash flow of another real asset. In other words, 
these assets by themselves are not creating any real cash flows, but rather they are mimicking the cash flow streams of the other assets in the financial system that are generating those type of cash flows. So these are very useful instruments. I don't want to, I want to be very clear about it, but at the same time, they are very unstable and kind of like unexamined type of instruments. And uh, the problem with the shift of uh, global dollar funding from happening through bank loans to uh, uh, towards happening to for synthetic instruments such as foreign exchange swap or FX swap is that the funding is happening outside the balance sheets of the institutions that are making market in those instruments, which means that if you are a regulator, if you are a central bank, for example, you cannot really go and sit in that institution, monitor their activities and balance sheet, and then try to recommend or try to stress test that balance sheet. Because even if you do so, you can still not see the type of funding that has happened through the foreign exchange or FX swap transactions. This is changing because like the clearing, the, the existence of clearing houses is making this market more um, transparent to the rest of us. But again, in terms of the transparency and the easiness of getting access through FX market, they are not comparable with uh, euro dollar loans. So, Basically, um, most of the shift is happening, to summarize what I just said, uh, two of the biggest trends is that the funding is happening from banks, uh, the, the funding is kind of like uh, shifting from being provided by the banks towards being uh, provided by the non-banks, and also most importantly, the instruments that are the vehicle of like supplying those funds uh, are uh, kind of like synthetic or derivative instruments that are some of the shadow, the most shadowy type of instruments that are out there. What happens when the funding happens through uh, the balance sheet of non-banks or through the uh, through instruments that are not that cannot be examined closely by the regulators okay so uh, basically like in the model I've already adopted the fact that or accepted the fact that most of the euro dollar funding is actually happening through uh, the through the uh, FX swap Okay, and then the question is that how does the price of uh, FX swap determine? Or uh, because the price of FX swap in this case is going to be the cost of access to dollar funding and global dollar funding for foreign investors. So uh, in the model, in order to answer that question, I examine the industrial organization or the balance sheet of the market makers in FX swap, foreign exchange dealers. When you look at the in any uh, model that examines the business model of the dealers, the bid as quotations and the spread between these two uh, of the dealers determine the price of the instrument that those dealers are making market for. In the case of FX swap, the bid ask spread of the FX swap dealers, the average of that, the mean of that, basically is the cost of dollar funding market. Okay, if this is the case, then we let's start understanding a little bit more what determines this spread. In most cases, the spread captures basically the cost of doing business for the dealers. For example, paying the people for working for you, paying the rent. The other costs are like to be able to, you know, uh, comply with the regulatory um, requirements. But most of the, some of the most important financial costs are the cost of access to dollar funding for the FX swap dealers themselves. Because remember, they are actually providing a synthetic type of dollar funding. But the way they are doing it is that they get access to the actual dollar funding, to the actual dollar. Through this FX swap transaction, they provide the dollar funding in an indirect way to the foreign investors. So this means that the main reason they are able to provide this indirect dollar funding 
is the fact that they do have access to the direct, direct dollar funding. So the cost of dollar funding is one of the costs of doing business. The other thing that FX swap dealers take into, uh, take into consideration is that this operation is risky. So what if ever, there are, everyone wants to have dollar, no one wants to have Japanese yen, for example. Okay, as a dealer, I am in the, it is my job, it is my business to actually provide dollar and accept, let's say, Japanese yen in return. This is how, this is how FX swap is structured. But then, if you look at my inventory, if you look at my inventory and as an FX swap dealer, you will see that I'm accumulating all these Japanese yen, which means that I have this very high exposure to the fluctuations in the price of Japanese yen, to the exchange rate that involves Japanese yen. These type of price risk means that I have to hedge myself. And this hedging cost that is, that is associated with my inventory risk or price risk is another cost of doing business. So when we look at, let's return to our main problem here, that how does the price of indirect dollar funding, ACA, the price of FX swap is determined? We already said that it's going to be through that um, bid ask a spread of the dealer. So some of this bid ask a spread can be explained by the cost of access to direct dollar funding by the dealers themselves and the cost of like, you know, protecting yourself as a dealer against this price risk, the inventory risk. But when we look at the business model more closely, they have added another element in addition to these very business-oriented elements or finance-oriented elements uh, to their spread. And uh, that's basically to compensate, com compensate their shareholders against the risk of being a market maker and the providers of indirect dollar funding. Let me explain that. What we may think of shareholder is that, okay, you know, you are a shareholder, you, you, you are in the market, you want to become a shareholder. You examine different uh, institutions and you may think that this particular institution is attractive for me and I want to become a major shareholder, right? So as a shareholder, you are the one who actually examine the business model of the company that you, are, you want to be a shareholder. So, and of course, we all know that the companies try to kind of like become an attractive target, but not that much by changing their business model. But in this case, what we are seeing here is that the so FX, there is this trend that is happening in the FX swap dealers outside the United States that when they are quoting their prices to their clients in the FX swap market, when they are making market in the indirect global dollar funding market, they actually, in addition to their funding cost, they're in addition to their uh, the cost of hedging themselves against the price risk, they are also adding an extra amount of, uh, you know, an extra amount to compensate the shareholders against the risk of these clients default, against the risk of, you know, against the fact that becoming and becoming an active provider of dollar funding market is something that was not their original intention as an FX swap dealer. But because of the changes in the market structure of global dollar funding market, they've actually accepted or adopted to this new role. And they think that this new role is exposing the return, uh, the, their shareholders to higher risks, uh, which might basically deteriorate their return on equity. And they want to compensate and satisfy their shareholders by asking for higher prices uh, from their clients who desperately need this global dollar funding. And that's why they are actually using all this indirect ways and the FX swap market to get access to it. So I do think this is actually um, 
when we move from the institutions such as bank, there are so many criticisms of bank and all of them are fair. But the institutions from banks who have, who part of their identity is to have a good relationship with the uh, regulators, in addition to have a good relationship with the shareholders, to the companies whose sole commitment is just to the uh, shareholder, and they are not even being regulated that heavily. These are the type of, I would say, distortions in the price that we're going to see. And who is going to pay this price? Uh, the people out there who are desperately seeking dollar funding and um, now facing higher prices. So what are the regulatory consequences of these changes that are happening in the global dollar funding market? Uh, well, one of the important changes is that uh, derivatives by design, by engineering, for those of us who kind of like are interested in the financial engineering, we see that because of, because again, like um, they are replicating other assets, to put it very simply, they are replicating other assets, it is not really very easy to examine them and scrutinize their structure, their engineering, and how they are being organized. So the instrument itself, by default, is considerably more opaque compared to, let's say, a bank loan. So, and this is something that it is ingrained in the design of this uh, particular type of financial instrument, such as derivative. The other thing, which is the most famous and well-known element and attribute of derivative is that these are off-balance sheet instruments. What does that mean? This means that these instruments, when they are being traded, they are not being recorded in the balance sheet. They do not change your balance sheet composition, and that's one of the reasons they're actually very attractive. So if you are a regulator, you are dealing with two things. First the instrument that even if you know who is holding this instrument and how much of this instrument is being held by that particular player in the financial system, the instrument is continuously expo imposing different type of risks that, v that we couldn't really predict, predict in the first place. So like this instrument basically uh, kind of like in terms of like risk management, it is unpredictable. And that's exactly somehow what we saw in UK and that and the problem that happened uh, in the pension fund industry of this instrument. So you cannot really fully understand the risk exposures of holding, the, that the, the exposures that you will get as a result of holding these instruments. So again, this is one thing about this instrument that makes its regulation extremely difficult. The other one is that Borio from the BIS, he actually wrote this very nice paper and he called this off-balance sheet aspect of uh, this FX swap and other derivatives as uh, these hidden debts, these hidden a ticking bomb that exists in the financial system and we don't even know where to look at in order to find this hidden bomb. So, and that's actually something that again makes its, uh, its regulation extremely difficult. The other, the last thing that I want to say is about the, instru uh, the institutions who are the market makers in, and the providers of the derivatives. Uh, these institutions are actually, um, I do believe some of the uh, services they are providing is extremely useful. It is another paper I'm writing on uh, the interest rate swap and basically saying that the interest rate swap and the market makers for interest rate swaps, such as Bank of America, are becoming the de facto domestic dollar funders in the United States and they're replacing the repo dealers. So this is another thing. But the point is that if the market is actually moving beyond more traditional wholesale funding, such as your dollar loans or re repurchase agreement or repo, then these dealers, the derivative dealers, are becoming the de facto providers of funding. And this is a very, very precious and valuable service. At the same time, 
this is happening in the trading desks of the institution and regulating the trading desk as the failure of the Volcker rule uh, that was part of the important uh, part, uh, part of the important components of Dot Frank showed us is extremely difficult. It is very difficult to regulate trading desks of financial institutions. And it happened that it is the trading desk of the financial institutions of the financial institutions that are actually making the market in the synthetic type of in, uh, instruments. And uh, so if you look, examine this phenomenon that the funding is happening in a synthetic market, in derivative market, from every angle you will see that the Fed and other regulators are simply not equipped to uh, even understand fully the implications of uh, what it means when derivatives are becoming the main funding instruments and when derivative dealers are becoming the main dollar funders.